something very significant, very, very important has been happening in the global battery market. I've been talking about this a lot, but people keep trying to argue that I'm wrong. Sorry, my friends, but the facts don't lie. We are transitioning globally to a certain type of battery. And the reality is, it's happening much faster than what anyone realizes. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. I hope you've been paying attention to what Elon Musk said about a year ago. What did he say? He said one type of battery chemistry is going to be the world's biggest battery chemistry. Now, obviously, it happened very quickly with the Tesla. Before anyone knew what had happened, more than half of Tesla's global vehicle sales were powered by lithium iron phosphate batteries. Happened very, very quickly. Something similar has happened very quickly in the global battery market. Last year, at the end of the year, the world's largest battery maker was CATL. CATL makes both lithium batteries for Tesla and for a number of other brands. They make two types of batteries essentially right now, lithium ion phosphate batteries and lithium ternary batteries. Lithium ternary batteries are the batteries in you know, most legacy auto cars like Volkswagen, General Motors cars, Ford, etc. They use lithium ternary batteries, which are generally a combination of nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminum, and lithium. Lithium ion phosphate batteries only use lithium, iron, and phosphate. Now, new generation lithium ion phosphate batteries will also use manganese in the cathode, giving them higher energy density. So in the past, lithium ternary batteries had most of the market. In fact, last year, they had around 80% of the global battery market. Things this year have dramatically changed in an, at an incredible pace. By the end of last year, CATL had 32.5% of the global battery market. LG Energy Solutions, who only make, only make lithium ternary batteries, not lithium ion phosphate. They plan on changing that, but right now only make lithium ternary batteries, had 21.5% of the market. A year before that, they had nearly 30% of the market. So their market share dropped by about one third over the past between the end of 2020 and the end of 2021. In third place was Panasonic with 14.7% of the global market. And then in fourth place was BYD with 6.9%. 6.9%, you know, that's pretty good. But this year, things have taken a huge change. I've been talking about this on the channel over and over and over. I've gotten lots of emails and messages from you guys telling me, well, not all of you, but some of you telling me that I'm wrong. Uh, this has been going on for a while now. It's because people just aren't paying attention to what's happening. I understand that. It's difficult to pay attention to all the details, but it's important to look at these numbers. BYD, more than 95% of the batteries they produce are lithium ion phosphate. They had 6.9% market share last year. In July, they had 16.2% market share. So their market share has way more than doubled in the space of only seven months way more than doubled. However, CATL owned 33.6% of market share and they're in first place. BYD jumped above LG Energy Solutions to take second place worldwide in July, 16.2%. LG Energy Solutions fell from 21.5% last year to only 11% market share. That means that half their market share has been eroded in only seven months. Why? Simply because more and more manufacturers are transitioning to using lithium ion phosphate batteries. Why? They're cheap, they're simple, and they're safe. Now, the concerning thing for LG Chem and also for Samsung SDI and Panasonic, Korean and Japanese battery manufacturers, is that China's battery manufacturers are taking their market share at a very fast pace. The reason being, that manufacturers outside of China weren't able to make LFP batteries until last year. And frankly, they didn't think they even should. But by the end of last year, the writing was on the wall. And a number of them have announced that they will be building lithium ion phosphate batteries, but it's gonna take them years to scale up. 
Now, for about 12 months since I started this channel, I've been predicting that BYD would become the second largest battery manufacturer on the earth. When I did start the channel, BYD, I believe, were actually in fifth place. So they've gone from fifth place to second place in the space of 12 months. That is a big jump. Part of this is the growth of electric vehicles worldwide. This growth has consolidated BYD's position in the battery market and it will continue to do so. For example, BYD has received a huge amount of marketing through their contract with Tesla to provide Tesla with batteries in the new Tesla Model Y standard range variant in Europe. So what are the actual numbers? Well, in July, BYD's installed battery volume was 6.4 gigawatt hours. Market share hit 16.2%. And that surpassed LG Energy Solutions 11%, meaning they ranked second globally. Now, this drop-off from LG Energy Solutions is alarming, but to be honest, it's slightly predictable. They went from 16% market share in June to only 11% in July. And part of the reason for that is that lithium ternary batteries coming from LG Chem have had received a very bad rap over the past 12 months because they're responsible for about 90% of worldwide battery recalls and fires over the past 12 months. They are pretty much responsible single-handedly for the majority of the press, the negative press around fires in battery packs. Now that's the truth. Unfortunately, it's the key reason why General Motors had to recall their Bolt EV and Bolt EUV. It's the key reason why GM couldn't make any of these cars for around eight months and just completely shut their factory. It's the reason why Hyundai and Kia have had to recall their cars. The list goes on and on and on. Now, in fourth place was Japan's Panasonic. They ranked fourth with a 7.2% market share. The majority of that battery production, though, is in the United States. So while they're a Japanese company, part of well, a pretty large percentage of that production is their joint venture with Tesla at the Gigafactory Nevada in Las Vegas. South Korea's SK On ranked fifth with a 6% market share, and Samsung SDI ranked seventh with a 4.9% market share. China's CALB, Goshan High Tech, Sunwoda, and S Volt Energy ranked sixth, eighth, ninth, and tenth, respectively. Now, if we add up the entire year so far, though, the truth is, LG Energy Solutions are still in front of BYD. BYD has a 12.6% global market share for the year so far, and LG Energy Solutions has a 14% market share as well. But market share for the whole year really doesn't tell you a true story. It gives you a true picture, an accurate picture of what's really going on. What's really going on? The world is absolutely transitioning to lithium iron phosphate batteries. Production is happening much quicker. It seems as though companies who manufacture LFP batteries are able to ramp up battery production much quicker than companies that manufacture ternary batteries using cobalt, nickel, manganese, aluminium, etc. And this has been a huge advantage for CATL. Now, CATL and LG Energy Solutions used to have a very similar global market share. In fact, only about 12 months ago, their market share was neck and neck. That's changed rapidly. And that all comes down to the fact that CATL now manufacture a lot of lithium iron phosphate batteries. CATL's market share for the entire first seven months of this year is 35% worldwide, meaning they have more than a third of global battery market share. LG Energy Solutions, only 14%. Now, the fact that they used to be neck and neck, and now we see this enormous change really just comes down to one thing. CATL bet on the right chemistry and LG did not. One of the other big advantages that BYD have is because they make their own batteries, they're able to ramp production of their cars at lightning speed. For BYD, as its batteries are mainly supplied by itself going into its own cars, its battery installations grew at an insane rate with their insane growth in electric vehicle deliveries and sales as well. BYD now has a backlog of more than 700,000 vehicles, EVs, and they delivered 162,500 in July and increased that to 175,000 in August with battery deployments of 7.3 gigawatt hours and 7.55 gigawatt hours respectively. 
And this really does provide not only BYD, the car company, with a huge advantage over its competition, making its own cheap batteries, but also BYD, the battery company, with advantage over its competition by always having demand. They create it themselves. BYD's battery capacity will be supplied mainly to the company itself in 2023. They said that that's their strategy in order to deliver 4 million EVs next year. From 2024 onwards, it will change. They'll then be supplying companies such as Tesla and Toyota, Ford and other companies with a lot more lithium iron phosphate batteries. So because of BYD's current wait list of 700,000 electric cars, there is a backlog that's pretty long. You've got to wait about four or five months in China to get your electric car. However, by the end of this year, BYD will have completed their 100 gigawatt hour battery factory in China. Now, whilst it's true that LG Chem, through their partnerships with General Motors and other car companies, will ramp up battery production as well, you've got to remember, the cost of BYD's Blade battery is significantly lower than the cost of GM and LG Energy Solutions Ultium battery. So which one do you think will win out over the long term? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.